All right, first question. <coughs> the very back. John Whittle with TheBigSquare.com, 24-7 Sports. Um, obviously, you know this is coming, pick last in, in the SEC, but you've got an older team. What, how do you broach that subject with, with those guys, and would you handle it differently if, if you had a young team? John, how are we doing? Um, let's see. Right out of the gates with <clears throat> pick last. So here's what I'll say about picks. There were 14 picks last year. Does anybody know how many of those were right? The team was picked at whatever spot, and then it ended up finishing in that spot out of the 14 picks? Zero. Not one team last year was picked in this spot and then finished in that same spot. So I say that only to say also half of the picks last year Let's say if, you, if your standard deviation was one or two or three, it seemed like you knew something and you picked those right. I.e., I picked the team first and they finished fourth. You had some sort of idea. Seven of the picks last year fit to that criteria. Seven of the picks were off by more than four. Two of the picks, one was off by seven, one was off by eight. So. There's not much in a pick, but I will say this personally, and I hope our team takes this. I'm, the only thing I can thank them for is that they picked us last. Second to last is nothing. What does that mean? I can't even use that as billboard material. They pick us second to last. So last it is. Um, but last year, I think we had the most teams in the NCAA tournament in the history of the SEC. I think that's accurate. I think we also had the most teams in the NCAA tournament of any other conference in men's basketball. We tied with the Big Ten. So we had a good league. Our team had 122 total starts of all the players in their career, 122. We did not finish last last year. We this year have 480 total starts. So I don't know, maybe we'll finish last, possibly. But to me, just as the way I think, the audacity for someone to actually say you're gonna finish last. The league was as good as it was last year. We were undermanned, I will say that. For certain, we were undermanned. We won four games. We won at Kentucky. We had the number two team in the country in an overtime game. They had to score at the end of the game to force overtime. We played another NCAA tournament team to the last possession. We had three overtime losses, didn't finish last, and then we're picked to finish last. So maybe the league has gotten that much better. I know my team's more experienced. I know my team is better. So I don't aspire to not be last, right? I don't aspire to not be last. But someone's asking me about the fact that we were picked last, so it just doesn't make that much sense to me. But Hopefully to my team, it'll be something, a source of inspiration and uh, disrespect, honestly, to them to come out and play. Again, they're not playing to not be last. What a, what a low goal that would be, okay? But you asked me about being picked last, and I don't see it. But it's, I mean, it's a cool pick. I guess it's convenient. You're going to look. Maybe you like this coach better. This coach is smarter. This coach has more experience. This player that we picked up, you don't think he's very good. I don't know. We're much more significantly more skilled, significantly more experienced, and we did not finish last last year. Thanks, John. Anybody else? Hi, Coach. Uh, Johnny Thornton from Game Day Weekly. Um, talk about the team, the sort of building from last year, strength-wise. What's, what's going to be better about South Carolina as a team as far as the strength? Yeah, um, I'll answer in two ways. One way will be just uh, – uh, thanks for your question, Johnny. One, one 
measure will be just our experience. Uh, I gave the numbers on that. Just older team, more games played. They've been coached more often. They've been in more situations. They have a different expectation for themselves that they know that's realistic. So, um, you know, I think if you look at the teams that have had success, a lot of them have had experience. And so right from the start, that's one thing. And, and that experience goes two ways. Not only is it just experience in college basketball, um, well, three ways. It's experience in college basketball, it's experience at this level of college basketball, and it's experience with me. I also have more guys that I've coached, significantly more guys that I've already coached that I'm coaching again this year. Last year, from terminology and all that. So last year we had none. Um, so that's one, but I think we're much more skilled we have a much more skilled team. I don't, that's not a thought, that's a fact. We have a much more skilled team, um, just in the ability to shoot the ball. More guys are capable shooters. We had a guy like Miles Studi who has proven his net worth as a shooter in this conference. Um, you know, Michi Johnson made 80 some threes last year. Uh, uh, Talon Cooper shot around 40% from three. Um, BJ uh, Mack obviously is a guy that's known to, to make threes at, uh, for a bigger guy at his position. So our, our skill as shooters and ability to put the ball, I think offensively we're significantly better. I think that would probably be the first thing that you'll be able to see um, pretty quickly. Um, and it's probably the biggest improvement that we've made overall, aside from the fact that we're just, these guys were uh, born earlier than the guys that we had last year. Morning, Coach. Morning. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Coach, what is the type of program you aspire to um, achieve offensively and defensively when you get your full roster um, in the coming years and this year as well? Yeah, I, I, I aspire just to be a good, solid team that is a, consistent, a consistently good team. I think we use the word consistency, and, and there's a negative connotation oftentimes associated with consistent. Um, but I hold consistency in the highest regard. And so I aspire to be consistent. I, I aspire to be predictable. I, I aspire to be predictably good. Um, I aspire to know what we're going to get every day in terms of our effort, in terms of our communication, in terms of uh, how we compete, in terms of how we follow defensive rules. I aspire to be so predictable in those areas. Um, and once we get to that point, uh, I know what the results are ultimately going to be. So, but, uh, but just from an offensive standpoint, I like to shoot threes. I, they're, they're worth more than twos. I'm no mathematician, but I, I do know that that's the way that that works out. Um, I think it allows you to spread the floor. I think there are a couple of things that guys don't like as players in, this, in, in the game today. They don't like to be dunked on, and they don't like to have a three sprayed in their face. And so they'll do anything to stop either of those from happening. Um, so I think if you can get some guys that can shoot the ball from three and make them, guys, defenders have a tendency to overreact. And that overreaction allows guys that aren't great drivers to be great drivers if they're good decision makers. It allows the floor to be spread. It allows guys to play one-on-one -on -one in the post a little bit more. So um, that's what I aspire us to be as an offensive team. I, I, I like guys that are, have a good feel for the game, that are intelligent, that are unselfish, but that, that doesn't mean they're not aggressive. That doesn't mean that they're not good. I aspire to have a team that has guys that are good at something and whatever that one thing might be, uh, to really be good at that. And then, and, and then it's up to me to, to figure out a way to use that ability offensively. So that's, that's us offensively. Defensively, again, I, I, I think offensively I like to be creative. I think guys have to be creative. I think they need to make decisions. I think they need to be able to, uh, to, to fail, but I want to be solid offensively. Defensively is the other, uh, opposite to me. I think you have to be very regimented. You have a certain amount of rules that every team has. Um, do you, do you, are you good at following your defensive principles, whatever that is, uh, for any particular team? But yeah, that's what I, I aspire our team to be solid, predictably good, predictably good, reproducible results. Um, in my experience as a, as a head coach even and as an assistant coach, I've been around teams that have won a lot and they've had, they were predictable results no matter where they were picked. My first year at Chattanooga, we were picked last, 10th out of 10th because there was no such thing as 11th. That's, a, that's who we were as a team. Um, and then four years later, they picked us first, so. 
Hey, Lamont, uh, Bob Wolf, Arkansas Democrat. I was going to ask you a couple of Arkansas questions, if that's okay. Sure. You know, Devo Davis, he, you faced him, I guess, for the first time last year. I think he had 15 points, seven assists, and he's back for his fourth year at Arkansas. That's kind of uncommon these days for a guy to be somewhere four years. What do you think about that, and just what, what do you remember about him as a player? What, what, what do you think makes, makes him good? <clears throat> um, he's been around. He's got familiarity with the league. He's a competitive guy. I think at the end of the day, he's a, he's, a, he's a really competitive guy. He made some plays. He played well against us, that's for sure. Um, he has a flair for making a play when it really counts the most, which I guess they all count the same. Uh, but it seems like based on time and circumstance, some plays seem to count more than others. He has a flair for that. Um, and yeah, he's been around for four years in the same place, which is a rarity these days. Uh, so, so we talk about these rules that I talk about that every team must have uh, on either side of the ball. He knows those. He helps impart that culture from uh, older guys to younger guys. Uh, and it's done by coaches, but it's the coaches' jobs. When it's done by players, it means it's real to them. So, um, but good player. He's a good player. Um, He's an experienced guy. Obviously, there's a lot of value in that. And so uh, I commend him for, for doing what he's done and, and had, having such a good career. I don't know how well you got to know Eric Musselman, but he, he was kind of one of the first transfer portal guys in Nevada. Uh, just what do you think, what, what you know about Eric? What do you think and maybe how he was one of the first guys to really do what's become such a big trend now? Uh, yeah, I think they had six or seven thousand point scores at Nevada on the one team. I remember seeing that at one point uh, when he was there and, and just uh, I just uh, thought that that what an advantage that was. We had taken a lot of transfer portal guys too. I mean, it wasn't even a transfer portal. It just was transfers at that point. Guys, remember boy, way back when guys had to sit out when you transferred? We had some of the guys that did that and ended up being good players for us too. So. Um, it's the, it's the way of the world now, and um, certainly he was, uh, he was in tune with that before it became the in vogue thing to do. We're here. Morning, Coach. Phil Kornblut, Sports Talk Media Network. Phil. Good morning. You were out-rebounded by four a game in SEC play last season. Do you think you've addressed that issue? How do you feel about your bigs? Um, I hope we have. I mean, some of it is, is experience. Uh, Josh Gray, whose mass makes a difference in this conference and probably most conferences, uh, he developed and, and blossomed throughout the season last year. So uh, he's continued to grow as a player. Um, as he continues to be able to be in there for extended minutes, I think that helps our rebounding efforts. Um, you know, we added some guys like Miles Studi, who has a track record of rebounding effectively. Um, and so, and, and we've continued to emphasize it. So we have, to, we have to do a better job. I mean, you think about it, every possession ends only in a couple of different ways. Uh, it's either a turnover, a made basket, or you have to rebound the thing at some point. Um, and so most of them end up in that. If your team's any good, you have to rebound the ball at some point. So someone has to do it, and we, it's, we'll do it by committee. We don't have someone right now that I would say is going to have Oscar Shibway numbers as a rebounder. Um, but, uh, but I think it's determination, and I think it's, there's some skill involved in it too, but I think it's more determination, um, willing to roll your sleeves up, uh, and embrace physicality and contact, and... Um, and then some other things like having a nose for a ball, anticipating where it's going to come off and things like that. Last question. Hey, Coach. Joey DeWire from VandySports.com. Joey, this is better be a good one. It's the last one, bud. Uh, what have you seen from Miles Studi throughout the fall and the summer, I guess, too? And what do you expect from him this year? Yeah, Miles is a great kid, first of all. He and his family, unbelievable people. Um, and I feel really fortunate to have him in our camp and on our team. And so, uh, but he's just an experienced guy. He's emotionally stable as he's a, as a player. Um, he's, he just, he'll do whatever you ask him to do. Uh, he's been around this league. He knows the style of play from other teams. He uh, has been in all these venues before. Um, so there's the value of that is extremely high, but he's a tremendous kid, a really, really dedicated worker, 
very dedicated worker. I can't say enough about that. He stays in the gym and works really hard at his game. Um, he's a great listener. He tries to learn anything that he can. And so my expectations are high for him in a lot of different ways. We try to add some things to his game um, at some point. Uh, but my expectations will be for him to, to continue to be a good shooter, improve some things that can help him pr improve his percentages, to be an aggressive guy for us, uh, to, to have a leadership role, um, and to lead by example, and to uh, uh, be a really good player for us. I think he's going to be a really good player for us. Okay, Thanks, guys. Coach. Thank you.